Welcome back to part three of this case training. My name is Jamie Oates and I am your host during this three part series where we, are, where we have been creating a hotel or location check-in and check-out system where you can then also manage the service delivery and requests of people who are visiting the location. Okay, so so far we have created here the admin, ad, uh, the administration applications, as well as the reservation process. So we're starting to create the check-in, check-out, delivery, as well as the requests, and really quickly generate the security, which we will all be doing during this video. So it's going to be a quick one, and some sections we will jump over, as they will not be so important, and they can pretty much be replicated from what we have within the application, depending on the time that we have left within this video. Okay, so let's start off with the check-in process. So I'm going to start here with a new application. And the first application I'll create is a grid. And this grid, I will add the following SQL statement. So here I'm using the view reservations. In fact, we could actually skip this section. And what we're going to do, instead of doing that, instead of recreating the whole grid again, let's just come here and copy this one, grid reservations. Sorry, using the wrong copy. We don't want to copy it from a, to another project. We want to copy it here within this project. And I'm going to call this one now grid. I'll call it VW reservations and check in. Okay. Did I already did I name the other grid for the reservations? Let me see, let me go back here for a moment. So, um, okay, so I actually created the grid here already. So I run that and we should now have the same grid. Now for some reason I had already created it. We will actually want to remove that. Okay, so I come back here, we'll then move this application into the check-in directory. And okay that. And now in check-in, We'll leave here the name. So I'm just going to check that again because that's really weird. Okay, so we have here then the check in, and now within the check in, we have here this grid as previous. We haven't done any uh, changes to the styling in this one, so we're pretty much going to leave it as it is. And what we want to do is actually add some application links to this so that we can complete the check in process of a user. So the first thing I'm going to do here is actually add a new field. So I've got a new field. Now, so one new field, I'm going to call this the check-in field and then create. And then I'm going to give this a data type of HTML image and select one of the images from our project images here. And let's use here the key for check-in. And if I run that again, we will now have an icon there ready to click. Okay, so let's go ahead then and create the form, which will then be used to manage this. So we have two forms to create here. So I'm going to create the first one, which is then the customer, customer check-in. So this will use the customer table. And here I'll call it customers check-in, create. Okay, and now here, just quickly adjust some of these fields. Let's do that in field positioning. So ID customer, I'll hide that. We don't need the images. The country ID, let's move this up. And we can further customize that as we please. Okay, so now with this form ready, we can actually link this now to here. And what we do then is here within the application links. We will then come here and create a new link and a field link. And next, oh, sorry, we actually want to select the field first. So then the field is actually here, the check-in that we had just created. And then go next. Okay, and we want here the form customers check-in, which is right here. And next again, passing the customer ID. And we want to pass here also the customer ID again. 
Okay, we can open that in the same window, remove the delete option and save. In fact, we want to change the insert option also right here. Okay, so now if I run that, we now have our option. So we have here, now we actually need the insert here, sorry. So I'll come back here and edit that link again here. So with an application link, so we can go back to properties and we need the insert actually. So save that and run again. Okay, so we now have our insert here so we can actually add new, new entries into this. Okay, so let's continue on. We have one more form here to create, which is then the check-in form. So for the check-in form, we are going to select form and for this table, we are going to select the check-in table. So table check-in and go create. And we can run this form also. Okay, and we have here our basic form. Now we could go ahead and style this as we have done with the other forms. I'm gonna go ahead and apply the initial elements that we need. So first of all here, we have some events that we need to apply. And the first thing we want to do is on application init, start this form new. So form TB check-in, start new, I'll save that quickly. And then on after insert on this one, we want to first of all, we want to update the reservation table. Okay, so we update our reservation table with a specific stage where the reservation ID equals here the reservation ID. Okay, we then commit the transaction and then we continue on and create our next process, which is then actually adding the room occupation. Okay, so here we insert to the available rooms and we update the room information which has been reserved within this form. Okay, so the next part of that then is actually adding the room data. Okay, so then we add our room data and we are capturing here the values which we are then going to use. Continuing on, we continue and need to also capture our client information. So here I'm capturing the client information and then we are again, as previous, going to set up an email and send that email to the client. So here what I will do actually missing a section there so let's just copy the same again so client data okay and then we have here the email so we set up the email and then we send the email okay so then i will comment this out again so that we can actually test out the form and see how it works okay so the next up we need to commit the transaction again so we've processed all of this so we want to make sure that email gets sent and the data is stored in the database We'll also display a message to the end user. So we apply a script here. And then finally, we redirect back to the grid. Okay, so let me copy that correctly. And then we redirect here back to the VW reservations checking grid. Okay, so if I run that now, you see that we, first of all, don't have any details, here, so we still need to complete here the form. So let's go ahead and do that and edit the fields. So we have here, first of all, the ID reservation. Let's check this one first. Now here we want to add our own lookup. Let's change this to a select field. And here I will apply the lookup, checking the reservation table for the reservation using the var ID reservation. So save that. We have then also the customer, and there we're going to apply again a select field. And here we will apply a custom select again, this time with again with the reservation ID taken from the view reservations. Then also have our room ID. Now this one is a little more extensive. So again, I'll select, use here the select. And if you remember with the room, we have a few, a few details there. So we're actually combining here the room table and the room type table, as well as here the reservation, well, room reservation X customers, okay? So we're con concatting into information here as well and displaying custom information within the form for the select. Okay, so then we also have here 
We need to add services in here also. So then I will add a new field. And if I go next, I want to use a select field. And I'm going to call this one services. And I'm not going to create a new block and just go create. Okay, so for the services, we will add the following select statement. So here I am again using the service reservation X customers services table and combining the two and again via the var ID reservation. Okay, so if I run this form now, we will be required to enter the reservation ID. So I believe 10 is a number is one of them. So we have then our room information here, the customer, the reservation ID and the services and so forth within this form. Now we could go ahead and continue the customizations. As mentioned, please go ahead and do that within the downloadable project. They are all customized. I spent the, the extra time and actually went ahead and made them all look the same so that we actually have our entire process running here and looking great. Okay, so that, now our forms here are ready. Let's just quickly run the check-in. Uh, we still have it open. That's okay. That should be good. So then run our grid and then see how that process goes through. And then I can click here the check-in button and I haven't actually generated that form yet. So let's come here and generate that form. Now return back here to the grid. You see, I still need to make some changes here to that form also. And then opening that then returns back as it should. I and mean, then we can check in with those customer details and check the customer in. So let's come here to the customer's check-in form and update these fields that we have here. So within the customer check within the customer check-in form, we have here the country ID. So for the country ID, we can just use here the automatic selection. Okay, the default values, choose the connection and then the ID country. We again ensure select is available. And here we add the following statement, which we've used previously, which then we can now add the Ajax load to the country field. So I come back to the country field, use Ajax to reload other fields. And here I then enable the Ajax load for the ID country doc on and then run that again. And then when I make changes now to the country field, it will automatically update the document field accordingly. Now we could continue on, add here the gender as we had done previously with a radio button, maybe add multi-line for the address, specify the customer emails and email field and so forth. Or we could continue on with our application, which is exactly what we're gonna do. So the check-in process is now complete. Let's go ahead then and continue with the checkout. So if we come here to checkout, for the checkout, we then have two applications we need to create, and that would be then a grid and a form. So if we start off with the grid, first of all, now I select here the grid, I enter the custom SQL statement here. So here we are connecting to the VW view checking where the ID reservation, so we're actually doing a, a distinct selection here also from the checkout table also, and then we're grouping the fields here within the selection. So for this table, I will call this one grid underscore TV underscore checkout. Okay, and go create. Okay, now we also need a form. So if I go here, new application, and I will then go form, and then this here, I'll use the table check at checkout, form TV checkout, and create. And now we can link the grid and the form together to so create a new link. And here I'll use the edit link. We have then here the form TV checkout, go next. Ensure the ID checkout, customer name. And did I just collect, select the correct field form? Form TB checkout. Okay, so let me see here the SQL uh, ID checkout. 
So why do we not have here ID checkout? Okay, let's go back here for a moment. Form TB checkout. Here's the first. Are you sure it's the only one? So it is. Yeah, so search is only showing two. So within the grid, why are we then not having now the ID? So create a new link. Want the edit link. Go next. Form TB checkout. So let me run this one here quick. Okay. Come back to the checkout. Form TB checkout. And we don't have the ID here. Okay, so let's quickly check our grid again. And so I'll come into the SQL. And we're seeing here, we do not actually have the ID added here yet. And the reason for that is, is because we need to add to our form first. Okay, so let's update the form. We have here some events that we need to add. So if I come here to on application in it, first of all, we want to start this application first as a new. So form TV checkout. And then on load, we actually want to load the services here. So here we then sum the values that the customer has then used within the property. So here the offer price or the public price, as well as then the services that have then been provided. So we have, we have here then the service variable, and we're going to use that in a moment. We first of all need to also check the room rate. So here we have then also the room rate, which is then applied. And we then want to combine all of that. So just really quickly copy paste that here. We have then here our service rate, which is then the service, the room rate and the total rate. So we come here to our fields. We have here room rate, service rate and the total rate. Okay, so if I go ahead and run that now, we will be requested the reservation ID, so 10 again, check out. And there's no data been stored for that because that user's not actually checked in yet. Okay, so let's continue on anyway, and we can maybe go through that process. So we still have one event here to add, and that is on after insert. Okay, and on after insert, we want to do first of all is enable the room that it is available. So we set the room as available again and we commit the transaction. We also then want to again send a confirmation email to the user. So let's then gather our customer data for the email. Uh, we then also need to check the entry time. So yeah, actually I'm gonna have to write this one. So we have here, um, yeah. this, then check underscore SQL. And we have then our field select. And it's from the view check-in. So we come here to, to our views, view check-in. And here we want the exit time, entry time, checkout time. There we go. So checkout time. So select checkout time. Uh, and description, just double check, description. And from VW underscore check-in. And if we close that, we then want SC lookup, open close brackets. And it's then RS, comma, and then we have here check SQL. Check SQL. Okay. And then from here, then if is it, do our brackets first. If is it, open close brackets again. 
And so record set zero and zero. Okay, do we have all the brackets? One, two, one, two. Okay, so from here then we open close again. And we now have our entry time or exit time. Time equals, which then equals our record set one. Our S zero and zero, this one. Close that and we'll just copy paste that for the next one. Copy, paste. And this one here is then the we'll just call it description and that would be record set entry zero one. Okay, so now I need to actually remove that here. So I'm gonna nudge that down a little below the confirmation mail. Okay. And then we want to then create our email. So we have our subject and message again as previously. So here we are basically saying the value of services. So I still need to change some of the values here. As you see, and these are updated in the training that you will be downloading. So please pay no attention that they're not the original ones here. Okay, so we have here then also the send mail that we need to then apply so that our email actually gets sent. Okay, so let me just copy paste that and then our email gets sent. So we need to commit our transaction again. So we can't forget that one, sc underscore commit underscore trans and that will then establish our connection now what we want to do then here maybe is also display an alert to the end user so let me add an alert in here sc alert and i'll close that already and then we can add some brackets in here check out complete okay okay so let me save that okay so now if we run our form again I think we still need to update the fields here. Okay, then go ahead and customize the fields. And we should be then able to come here to our checkout and add our application links here. So create a new link, edit link, next. So this was actually a field link here, no, edit link. Okay, so TV checkout, next. And we have here the ID checkout. So we actually want this as no value. And the reservation, we set here the reservation number, which is that one, the ID reservation. Okay, so we then confirm that. Open the same window. And we can leave the default options here for the insert, update, delete, and save that. And then we can go ahead and run our checkout grid. Okay, so once we have our records enabled here, we will then also have the option to edit each one of these and then also update the checkout process and send them an email confirmation of the checkout process having occurred. Okay, so then we have a few applications still to create, which is for the here the service delivery and the service requests. So for the service delivery, we are going to go ahead and create, first of all, a grid application. So I'll create a new application. And if I just copy paste here the SQL statement again, there's a slight change here. So we're selecting here the check the view check-in table. And we are then defining here a case when delivered equals Y, then yes, else no, and as delivered. Okay, and then we can just go ahead, first of all, and add our name here. So we'll go VW underscore check-in underscore services. Okay, so now that once that's done, I can go ahead and click create. And then what I'm going to do first of all is close that grid application. And now I'm just going to copy that. So I don't have to recreate it in a moment. And I'll just go VW underscore check-in requests. Okay, so check in service requests. I'll OK that. And now the service request, I will move here into the other folder. So I go move and then select the, here the service requests folder and then move that. Okay, so we have now our two grids available within the delivery requests and we still have to make our 
modifications here, as well as create a form. So for the form, we go then to application again, and select form, and here we select the table, service reservation x customers, and if I go underscore waiter, okay, and then create. Okay, so now here within the check-in services, I will come here to application links, and I will now link these two forms here together. So the first thing we're going to do is come here to create new link, and we can select the field link, field link and here we'll add that onto the delivered field we have it delivered there we are and go next and we want to specify here the service relations x customers table go next and we're actually missing here the reservation id still so we have to edit here the table the form first so let's go ahead and do that and now within this form we come here first of all to events and the on validate. So here we want to change, first of all, the field delivery date time that we have here. Delivery date time equals date. And on after insert, we are going to commit the transaction. We could display an alert and then we are going to redirect back to this form here and to this grid that we've just created here. Okay, so now within some of these fields, let's have a look here at the fields. We have a few too many, so let's go ahead and modify this first of all. We don't need here the uh, service reservation X customers. We want ID waiter, we need ID customer, we need the reservation ID, the service ID, the request date time, and also delivered. So let's remove here the delivery and service employee because they will be then in the next form and then we can save that and then come here and change the field values so for the id waiter we want to use a select field and here we will cap be, be capturing the waiter id so var id waiter and then for the customer also use a select field And here we have a custom statement again. So here we are selecting the VW check-in, the customer and customer name, where the ID reservation not in select distinct ID reservation from checkout, okay? So we have then also the ID reservation. And here again, we need the select field. Where we capture the ID customer. So here we check the ID reservation, ID reservation from VW check-in, where ID customer equals the field ID customer. We have then also here the service field. So again, use a select data type. And then in the select option, we are using the table services and we are just concatenating some information here and displaying it in a user more user-friendly way. So if we go ahead and run now, we have the ID waiter, I enter one, and then we have the services available, the requested date time, the customer ID and the reservation ID, and whether it has been delivered. Okay, so back here in check-in services, let's come back here to the application links again, we can go back we can select our form again, which is automatically selected, and the IDs have been updated as we see. Okay, so now here we can then go for the first one, no value, and the var ID waiter is then the ID waiter. We confirm that, and we can save. Okay, so we run our grid application. We now have the next step process, the next part of this process ready, and we can continue then also with our next application, which is the service requests. Now here we've already created our grid application. We just need to now create a new form. 
and also link that form to this grid application. So let's open up this grid first of all and run it, be identical as the previous one. And we can also go ahead and start to create the form which we will be using here, which will be again for the service, the table service reservations X customers. And this one we can call this underscore service and go create. Okay, we can then go ahead and run the form. And here again, we will need to make some changes to the application. So we have the fields that we want. So we can change here compared to the previous form, remembering that one of them was for the service staff and the others for the waiter staff. So this is one, this form is for the service staff. So if we come here and edit the fields, we can hide the ID reservation customer. We need the reservation, we need the customer, we need the ID waiter the delivered and delivery date time. So here we hide the service employee. Sorry, this is actually the other way around. Service employee, uh, customer, the reservation, the service, and the request date time. Okay, so let me double check the other form that we did actually have there. So this one is then for the waiter. So here we have request date time delivered ID waiter. Okay, so that's perfect. Okay, so I can close that, close that form. I can run this one then. And then we have our form nearly there. So let's go ahead and then edit the fields here again. So they are also ready. So we have here, first of all, the service employee. And for the service employee, we select here the data type select. We add our own SQL statement in here again, using the table employee services and grabbing the username, depending on the var ID service employee ID presented on load. Okay, so we have then next up the ID customer. Again, the data type select. Okay, and here we'll add a custom select again, custom statement and here, ID customer, customer name from VW check-in where ID reservation not in select distinct ID reservation. So very similar to our, well, identical to the other form. We have then also again the ID reservation. So here again, we'll be capturing the um, user ID, customer ID, sorry. So enter that here and save that. And then we also have the service again Again, a select, and then here we can copy and paste the statement in there again and run the form. Okay, so with that, then we have then the customer reservation and so forth here. We can then um, use that for our checkouts and service requests for our customers. So the next most important part of this project I need to continue on is actually the security. So if I go ahead and come here to root and come to modules in the top menu and select security, we can start to create the security applications for this project. So actually I'll go back, I'll create a new profile, go next, select group applications, go next again, select the connection, now we can delete the tables if they already exist. We can protect the logged users and use so, uh, social networks. So I'm going to use existing tables because I already have them there, okay? Now going through the process, you would add all these fields and select all the tables like I'm going to do now. So we use here for the user table, sec users, and then select all of the relevant fields. Now, once all of the fields have been selected, we can continue with the security and click next. Now, the only reason why I'm doing that is if you remember within our database, we have the tables already here. So if you hear the database table, 
we can see here that we have the sec apps groups and so forth but then within the security users we already have the hotel employees and the workers within the table already okay so we can give the application a prefix so app underscore whatever the application name is when the session expires we'll redirect to the login encryption or we we'll use md5 and the rest of this i think i'll leave it as it is we'll come here to the login and we can leave this as it is also view the characters so forth retrieve password we can reset this with an email that's good new users now for the default group we want to add here customers uh, allows registration of new users so the other options are entirely up to you of course email settings and then the login template where we will use an external library so I'll enable external libraries here and then what I'm going to do is if I save the samples library within the project and here let's call this hotel and save as and then we now have a library within our project we can use so I say use library and save the project files and now back within the security we can reload this say yes to use the template for the login and then here I will use login 02 go next and have our username password as admin admin the group administrator and then the username uh, well the name and email address of the administrator so I'm just going to go next and next again so I will then generate the security which will then link all of the applications we've created now into the security platform for only the administrator accounts that's very important to note so when we then actually run the security for the first time only the administrator account will have access to all of the applications okay so now we can actually go ahead we have here our app menu so we will want to add all of our applications to the menu here so a really quick way to do that is select here the import applications which then opens up the following box and then we can select here all of the applications which we then want to include within our menu okay so that's already been done within the original and you'll see that it's all then organized also and then added so forth so if i go ahead and run that and you'll see that we have then now the security is actually enabled so we do need to log in with the security now one thing that we can do now that the security is enabled so first of all we can go here and use the run project button and by clicking that we can now select our initial application which would then be the app login i'll save that and then now when we ever we click on the run project it will generate the applications and then run the login page for us so that's obviously running now and then once that's done it will open the login and we can then sign in okay so we're using a template here and we can then go ahead and actually make some changes to this so if i come up here to tools and then external libraries and then i can scroll down and here then i can edit the library which we've just saved and here within the login we have here the html file and here then i can go ahead and change the background image for instance for this login here i can then also add the hotel check-in name for the platform check-in and check out system okay so just by updating that here within this html file and then closing all of this we can then see those changes directly within our login page so if i go ahead and run the login page again we'll use the button the run button up here we will then have the updates within our application now i did just save them and i am using the correct one am i not so external libraries let's check that edit login click the login in zero two so check in check out system okay yes we saved that so close close and then we can generate the source code again so it updates the, the library files and then we can run our application okay so 
Now with the login page created, we need to add some code in here and make some adjustments to the validation. So we have here, first of all, in the events on script init, we want to add our variables in here. So we have here, first of all, the user email. And here we then want to add the var underscore ID underscore waiter. And we also want to add the var underscore ID underscore service. Okay, so adding two new global variables, which are then reset on load. So then we have on load, we don't need to make any changes here, we're just resetting the uh, starting the application new, and then on validate. So now with the latest update, there have been some changes to how this works here. And to be honest, I'm not 100% sure on that. So I may be making a slight mistake here in a moment. So let me first of all come here and I'm going to update here the SQL query with one that we have going here. So if I just copy that and paste that, there we go. Okay, so what we're doing here is we are com uh, combining or concatenating, concatenating the two tables and joining them basically. So we're joining the user groups, the groups, as well as then the user. So we have group ID, description, email, name, active and priv admin, okay? So then what we're going to do then is down the bottom here, where we have these values here, we're going to add our new values. So I'm just gonna copy paste those in here, okay? And that is then going to add our new values for the group ID, as well as the group description. Now, the difference that I'm seeing here from the new version is that we now have the re remember me validate option. Okay, so this would be a method down here that is available. And normally we would set global variables. Now, I'm not seeing them. I haven't seen them in any of the applications. So I'm not entirely sure what's happen happening with them now. So I'm going to go ahead and add them anyway, as we had previously. Okay, so we'll be setting here the global variables for the user login, priv admin, user name and email. And then also for the group ID and group description. Okay, so now below that, but above the remember me validate, we also then want to check the user group of our waiters that log in, as well as then the service employees. So we start here with the wait, waiter ID. So here we will grab the waiter ID from employees and check whether they, they can actually log in or not. And then the same also again for the employee so copy the correct selection there we go now we have the service employee also okay so these will set then the global variables of id waiter and id service depending if one of those agents have logged into the system okay so now because depending on the security you've created if you have a logged application here also and requested that you have the extra security for users then you may also want to add some of these variables and selections in there also so that you have the entire process working correctly. So that is all for today with uh, this application so far. We have created today all of the administrative applications, the reservation applications, the check-in and check-out applications, as well as the service delivery and request applications required for this project. Now I'm gonna go ahead and show you the original one again and this is basically what you will be downloading and with some with an extra little bit of time you would also have the same layout so again here i changed the background image we have the text updated and if i go ahead and log in here we can see then that the menu is all organized that the all of the grids are nice and clean and tidy and have all been styled styled also Okay, so if you have any questions, of course, please do post them within the below menu and let us know if you have any doubts, questions, or if you require any help with the project. Of course, you can always contact Scriptcase for any issues that you may have for support, open a ticket, or contact somebody within the forum where there are always somebody to answer questions if you need uh, some direct and speedy help. So thank you very much for watching today. I hope you have enjoyed. Uh, as mentioned, the download for the project as well as the database will be within the video description. Thank you for watching today and hope to see you again soon.